Good morning, viewers, and welcome to another Onside SA Soccer Show. Paul is away at the Asian Racing Conference in Cape Town, and I'll be joined with our UK correspondent, Stevie Brahm, to go over the Champions League results and also the Man City Champions League ban. But we start off, as always, with our last one standing soccer competition. Going into round two, we had 232 entries. Of that, 218 were successful. The 14 that went out were nine were on Southampton, two each on Brighton and Leicester, and one unfortunate soul on Wolverhampton Wanderers. Special mention must be made to our man of the week, Graham Ace Clark, who picked Manchester United at 7-2 to win at Chelsea. Also, praise must be given to Lawrence Verners, who had eight out of nine selections arrive using four different sides. Greg Veal was 5-for-5 five five using three sides. And mention to Gary Citron, 4-for-4, four four, Nikesha Joda, Francoise Dumy, and Mark Curry's Investec side, who had 13 out of 13 successful picks. We now go over to London to our UK studio to discuss the, the midweek soccer with Stevie Brom. Good morning, Steve. Morning, Barge. Champions League results. The English teams didn't, uh, weren't too good, were they? No, but poor results for, for both of them. I think that, uh, and obviously Liverpool game first, I mean, you know, I think they got the, you know, they gave away a pretty sort of sloppy early goal and, and that was uh, that was it. Atletico do what they do well and that's defend, put, you know, get numbers behind the ball and make it very, very difficult. And as much as Liverpool had possession, they only created half chances, really. They didn't get a shot on target. And I think that's going to be, could easily be the pattern of the game at Anfield. Liverpool are going to have to find a way through. won't be easy. I think they will sneak through, but I think they're going to have to really uh, sharpen up a little bit. What they can't afford to do, obviously, is concede a, concede a goal at home early on because, you know, to get three then against Atletico will be difficult. So mm. I think all to play for, but it's, it was disappointing. And also, I think... You know, I, I guess we've come to expect uh, that of a Simeone team. Yeah. I mean, the amount of theatrics and time wasting that went on. But you know, the referee, you know, at times it looked like he was going to get a grip of the game, but I don't think he did. Do you think the international break had a, had an effect on Liverpool's performance? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, we said before. I mean, they they took a break, and they I'm sure some of the players didn't really need it. Yeah. Um, you know, they've been sort of rotating a little bit. But, you know, didn't have a particularly onerous game at Norwich last week, uh, and at the end of the day, they just I thought at times in the first half they were just too pedestrian, and I just played into uh, Madrid's hands. So, you know, they just weren't moving the ball quick enough, and every time they sort of got anywhere near uh, the, the Madrid penalty area, it was packed full of sort of red and white striped shirts. So. I think that they started the second half a little bit sharper, but then that, that once they didn't score, that sort of went back to the same pattern of play again. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not sure the international break helped them, but, uh, you know, all to play for. Yeah, three weeks to go. Now, one team that yeah. Bedfair predicted, they said Dortmund were going to upset PSG. Did you see the highlights? I saw the highlights, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, the difference is uh, Erling Haaland. I mean, the, the you know, the fact that Dortmund were able to get him for uh, the release clause of 17 million. I mean, he's he's probably worth triple or quadruple that yeah. easily. I mean, he's just you know, he's, he's scored what something like uh, 11 Champions League goals now, yeah. and you know, scored as many for Dortmund, and he's only been there a few weeks. No, I mean, it was uh, to me. I think when I saw that uh, PSG had equalised, I thought, oh, that that's it. They came straight back, Dortmund. I think it's going to be. A really close game but PSG are going to be strong at home but you know pressure's on them you know they've got to get a result you know this their whole season hangs in the balance on that one game so um, you know we know that Dortmund can score goals but they do concede as well so I think that really is that really is uh, still a long way to go in that game. Oh, now Tottenham last night obviously we both watched that disappointing yeah. first half I don't know Mourinho got out Fox by when they played Chelsea at home and he got out Fox in the first half last night you know, I'll yeah, be Leipzig, I mean, you know, I thought should have won by more. Well, I mean, the first 15 minutes, I mean, they could easily have been sort of two or three down. I don't think they know what hit them. I mean, Leipzig would move the ball around quickly. Um, you know, they're obviously a very well-drilled team. They've got a good manager. has got building a huge reputation over there. And they've got some good players. Whether they can hold on to them come the summer, I mean, Timo Werner is, I think all the big clubs are going to be after him. And he showed why. Yeah. And Angelino, and there's a lot of, good, a lot of good players in that team. And I think Tottenham did well in the end, you know, to, to keep it to 1-0. I thought they put up a little bit of a fight, um, yeah. 
towards the latter part of the game, and they probably could have done with a goal. But I think I think it's going to be a really tough ask for them to go and win in Germany. Just not not just because you know the, the fact that they they lose, but without Son as well, without yeah. Son and Kane, I think it just makes it doubly hard for them. Yeah, especially with Deli Ali, he was invisible again. Now Atalanta upset Valencia four one. Yeah, I was, I was surprised. I, I, I wasn't surprised. They said they won, but the manner in which they won, I saw the highlights and reading the reports, it said they were well worth it. Mm. So, yeah, a lot for Valencia to do. I mean, they got they got an away goal, which I think has given them a, a you know a slight ray of hope. But I, I'd be very surprised if they can pull that claw that back. Yeah, now Man City beat West Ham in the rearranged game. It looked like a, an absolute stroll for them, Steve. I didn't watch it, but saw the highlights. Yeah, I watched a little bit of in between because obviously it kicked off half an hour before yes. the uh, Tottenham game and I saw the, the, the highlights after. But it, it looked like David Moyes had set West Ham up not to lose. I mean, he basically played what Mikel Antonio on his own up front, packed, packed the defence and midfield and hoped that he could hold out. And uh, once City scored, I think it was game over and they got a second. And I think they just took the foot off the gas a little bit. Yeah. West Ham never really looked like they were going to get back into the game. And I think, you know, they were cruising at the end. So... Um, Maybe Moyes will look back and think, well, you know, they didn't they didn't let in a hat fall because I think yeah. all difference could be uh, important towards the end of the season. So, um, you know, I don't think there's any surprise in the result. But uh, I wonder whether or not he's going to do the same sort of tactics when they play at Liverpool because they can't keep giving games up. I don't think you should go to Liverpool and just pack the defence and hope for the best. But uh, you know, I think uh, that, you know they now having played their game in hand, um, you know, they now are rooted in in the bottom three. Yeah, they don't look good, that's for sure. Now, Man City, the big talking point, obviously the financial fair play ban. What's the latest, Steve? Well, it's uh, interesting. I, I thought Guardiola was sort of... Uh last night was sort of saying you know making sort of cryptic comments about you know he won't go and the truth will come out and uh, you know I think City have already been very bullish about their statements saying that they will uh, appeal to the court of arbitration they feel that um, they've cooperated but they, they they don't feel that they've fallen foul of the FOP rules but then why would you wait for sort of um, you know do the you know do ban them if they didn't think they had a case? Yeah. I think this will run for a while. I don't think City with you know are just not going to roll over and accept it. I think that goes without saying. So I think this is one that could run in the courts for a while. Um, but it has thrown the cat amongst the pigeons because obviously if City are banned, you know, does it, therefore it looks like the Champions League goes down to fifth place, which basically means sort of uh, anyone who's in that you know that that sort of second quartile of teams is in with a chance. Yeah. Um, and obviously the knock-on effect for City not been able to play in the Champions League for two years as to how that affects their recruitment policy whether players will stay Guardiola's come out and said he'll definitely stay but that's <laughs> you know who knows what's going to happen so um, he doesn't stay anywhere that long anyway so yeah. um, you know I think that one will run I don't think it's a given that they're going to be out of the Champions League next season um, because I think the appeal process does take quite a while so we'll see you know I think there's a lot a, a lot going to happen there yeah, I just think UEFA have waited for too long. It's, you know, four years and overstating your sponsorship income. You know, they've obviously tracked and uh, I think they're in trouble, Steve. I think the football, especially like the Spanish and German clubs, I think they've been waiting to put them away. Yeah, you know, I think this is, uh, look, you know, I mean, the thing is, anything is, you know, obviously you want to make an example of them, but, yeah. you know, whether or not, you know, they then start looking at, you know, City, I, I read, will be pointing the finger at other clubs and saying, mm. well, they don't do anything different to us. So it's going to be, uh, it could be quite messy, um, you know, we'll, we'll see, but it's, uh, you know, but it has taken a long time to come out, and they were investigating between 2012 and 2016. It does make you wonder why it's taken so long to come out. Yeah, so. That's true. You know, oh. But it does, you know, it, it's it's thrown everything sort of upside down. So, you know, as I say, I mean, clubs don't know, or players or fans don't know what's going on. You know, you can finish in fifth place and wonder whether you are going to be in the Champions League next yeah. year. But it's still all to play for for everybody. So I think and as things stand, City are still in the Champions League, you know, depending on what, what the, the, how the appeal goes. That's true. Now, two teams that are fighting for fourth place, Chelsea at home to Tottenham. Steve, how do you see that going? Well, I think before I, I heard that Son was injured, I was thinking, you know, the way I thought they played at Villa in patches, uh, I thought Tottenham, you know, had a good chance here. Chelsea, I thought, were very poor um, the other evening against United. I mean, without Tammy Abraham, they don't seem to have a forward who's, who's got any confidence. Batshuayi uh, had a shocker. I mean, he had two or three sights of goal. You know, just, just 
rust, you know, just didn't look in any confidence at all. Tottenham without uh, Son, you know, a little bit toothless as well. So I think this will be a low-scoring game. Uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if it ends up all square. Yeah, so do I. Now Leicester hosts Man City. Man City have got the Real Madrid, Real Madrid away in midweek. You think he'll rotate, especially his elderly players? <laughs> I think he might do. I, I think this is certainly a game that uh, he didn't want Pep. You know, yeah. going to Leicester, who are going to be all over them, you'd think, you know, this is an opportunity for Leicester to con obviously consolidate third place and maybe even still make a push for second. So I think this is going to be a really tough game. I did. I still fancy that, you know, it depends if, if he, you know, if he plays his what we consider to be his strongest team to start, you know, that they might be too strong for Leicester. But um, I think, you know, he's not going to risk some of his key players for too long. I mean, I think if, you know, De Bruyne is, you know, had a, uh, took him off yesterday, you know, I'm not sure he wants to give him 90 minutes again. Laporte played yeah. for an hour. I think he will be forced to sort of rest one or two. Uh, and that might open the door for Leicester. So, you know, I think that one, that one could go anyway, I think. But, um, you know, Leicester not been quite at their sharpest though, in, in recent weeks, but I think it's a game they're going to target now. All right. Now, Burnley, who seem to be in good recent form, host Bournemouth. How do you see that one? Yeah, I mean, Burnley, as I say, four games ago, we were starting to write them off, and they come back with three wins and a draw. Um, had a very good win at Southampton, you know, crucial sort of game there, and they're on 34 points. I think they'll look at this and think, well, look, we can win this one and another one, and they're up to 40. I, I wouldn't be at all surprised if they win this. Bournemouth have had a couple of good home wins, but they still don't travel well on the road, so I fancy Burnley. OK, now one team that everybody can't get ahead around is Sheffield United. Beat Brighton this week? Well, again, you would think on if they play as they have been uh, and with the passion and sort of fight they have been, I think they probably can. Brighton have got to dig deep and they're put in a sort of performance that they did against uh, West Ham when they came back. I think that will be close. Sheffield United don't seem to put many teams away, but I think, again, I think Sheffield United might just edge this one. OK, and the Sunday, a big game on Sunday. Two teams slowly starting to gather momentum. Arsenal hosting Everton. Yeah, I mean, Arsenal, I thought, played very well in the second half, although Newcastle, once they went one Newcastle, down, didn't yeah. put up much, uh, much resistance. Everton are playing really well and making themselves very hard to beat. I think that's going to be a good game. I just wonder, you know, I think they might cancel themselves out. I don't think there'll be anything more than a goal in it. OK, now, Steve, the less said about our championship teams last week, but uh, Friday night, uh, Fulham go to Derby. Is it yeah, time to get back on the winning roll? Well, look, I think they have to find a way to get back, but it won't be easy because, obviously, uh, you know, we know that it's, it's all about Rooney on Friday and uh, it's live on Sky. Uh, you know, they've won their home game since he's been there. I think it's going to be a tough game. You know, I have no idea what went wrong against Barnsley last week. They just didn't show up for them for most of the game. So it's very difficult to predict. You know, I think that... Uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if, um, if, 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 it, if it ends up a draw, which isn't really good enough, I think, for us at the moment. Oh, okay. Especially with automatic. It was a terrible result losing at home to yeah, Barnsley. Yeah, no, I mean, I think that, uh, that that really was. I mean, that was an opportunity to, you know, to at least keep pace with Leeds. Yeah. Um, you, had a, you had a good win over Bristol. But, you know, to me, I think that was that's, that sort of sums, it, sums up our season, really, is that uh, just too inconsistent. Okay, I mentioned a Bristol. They host West Brom, who seem to be cruising. Steve, what do you think? I think, West, I think West Brom have sort of turned a corner. I mean, they should have won uh, the, the lunchtime game. I mean, they were, you know, Forrest got up very late. Uh, a really good equaliser, but, but West Brom were all over them for most of the game. I wouldn't be at all surprised if West, West Brom go there and win it. I think they're going to they're gonna finish top. I just think that they're just starting to find form, brought a couple of good players in on loan. Um, you know, three wins and a draw in their last four. You know, they find themselves quite a few points clear now, a third place. Um, Bristol a little bit shaky at home, so uh, it wouldn't surprise me if West Brom go there and get a result. Okay, now lunchtime kickoff in England: Brentford versus a black well, against a Blackburn team. You have come right of late, Steve. Can you sense an upset? Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, obviously, uh, they've won a couple of games away from home, Blackburn, played, played some good football. Brentford, you know, are strong side, but uh, they're a little bit inconsistent uh, at home. You know, they had a big win a couple of weeks ago, but, but they are a little bit inconsistent at home. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Blackburn um, surprised them. I know they've had a lot of injuries, Blackburn. They got one or two players back last week. Yeah. Um, again, you know, Blackburn are just on just on outside of the the, the, uh, the top six, and Brentford uh, are trying to sort of keep pace and trying to catch the the top two. But um, I think this is going to be a close game. All right, Steve. Uh, at the other end of the table, Charlton hosts Luton Town. Desperate clash that one. 
Yeah, I, I think that Charlton might just be a little bit too strong. Um, Luton away from home just concede so many goals. Yeah. Um, you know, they've had a couple of good wins at home, but away, you know, they, they do struggle. I think Charlton might just, just might just um, pip them. Another big game at the bottom: Stoke City at home to Cardiff City. Your call on yeah, that. I fancy, yeah, I fancy Cardiff. I mean, Stoke. You know, they seem to win one week, lose the next, and a poor, you know, lost a uh, poor, poor game at outplayed by Preston. Um, mm. Haven't shown much in recent weeks. So they've gone off the ball. Cardiff had a good win away last time out at uh, Huddersfield three yeah. 0 I fancy Cardiff. All right, Steve. Now the big time of the week. I need your best bet and your best value bet. Who are you going for? I'm going to go for Burnley. I think they're going to be too strong at home. I think that uh, you know, I think they can see uh, daylight there and get you know yeah. win there. I think really puts them safe. And, and I fancy Cardiff. I fancy Cardiff. Uh, I think they, you know, they've turned. You know, they're they're not far away uh, from a playoff place themselves. Yes. And, you know, had a few, you know, a bit of a slip up at home against Wigan, but they're not losing. And uh, they had a very good away win at Huddersfield last time out. So I fancy them going to Stoke and winning. All right. Steve, as always, thank you very much. Have a good Pleasure. weekend and let's hope Friday you guys get back to winning Absolutely. ways. Absolutely, yeah. We, that would be, uh, it'd be good to do that, but let's see. All right, Steve. Cheers, All the bud. best. Take care. Cheers. Bye. We're now going to go on to the Premiership fixtures for the weekend. And the first game is a lunchtime kickoff between Chelsea and Tottenham. Both teams, several injuries, battling for, for centre forwards. And I've got a lurker in... I saw 3-1 to one a red card yesterday. I don't know what the, the official was. Only one bookmaker who was betting on it. If I was having a bet on that particular game, it would be over three and a half bookings and a red card. I don't see Tottenham losing. I think Jose Mourinho is going to go up, park the bus, avoid defeat. And I just think it's going to be a fiery encounter. Both teams struggling, as I said earlier. A red card's my play in that particular game. I fancy Burnley as well. Bournemouth have lost seven of the last eight away from home. Burnley in the last four games have beat Man United, they beat Leicester, they went to Southampton, a little bit fortunate and won. And 12 to 10 Burnley, I think, is a good thing. Crystal Palace hosts Newcastle. Now, Crystal Palace are the Jekyll and Hyde team, in my opinion. Superb players. They've only won one of the last five at home. They haven't won in their last seven appearances. But Newcastle, having watched the second half display against Arsenal, I can't have them. I wouldn't be taking 9-10 to 10 Crystal Palace, but in all my exotics, I've gone Crystal Palace and the draw. Sheffield United, great story. If it wasn't for Jurgen Klopp, Chris Wilder would be manager of the year at Sheffield United. Just outside the playoff berths. And while they should win, the last home, home game against Bournemouth, they started off sloppy. And if they give this Brighton team a few chances... A draw is a major possibility, but as it stands, it should be Sheffield United all day. Southampton, how they got beat last week, I don't know against Burnley in the monsoon. But an Aston Villa team is showing plenty of fight. Jack Grealish is going well. Only problem is for Aston Villa, they do concede goals. I think this will be a classic. I think there'll be plenty of goals. I wouldn't be taking Southampton, but... You know, I think that if I have to have a bet, which I have, I've gone over two and a half goals in that particular match. The second page, we have Leicester at home to Man City. Now, as mentioned earlier, Man City play Real Madrid away in the Champions League. They rested Fernandinho last night. I think he's going to rest most of the, his players. It's a field job in all exotics, but I have a funny feeling Leicester have more to prove. they guaranteed, almost guaranteed a Champions League spot. 33 to 10, I think, is great value, especially as I think Man City may rest several of their key players. Now, Man United play Club Bruges in the Europa League on Thursday. Depending on the team, United do look good things, especially after Monday, Monday's fortunate win, especially with the VAR and Harry Maguire's red card decision. But if he goes with his full team against Club Bruges, Watford are a dangerous team. They beat Man United 2-0 in the home game. It should be 6 to 10 all day, but... Before I have a bet, I'll be having a look at uh, Solskjaer's team tonight. From all reports, he's going to make six, seven changes. So just be careful about firing the six to ten Man United, even though they should win. Wolves play Espanyol at, 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 uh, in the Europa League as well, but they go in great guns, Wolves. Been struggling at home a little bit, but they're a good team. They've played all the top sides, given them a good game. I think they should beat a Norwich City team who can't park the bus like they did against Liverpool. They're going to have to go for it. And I think Wolves will be certainties. I think Wolves to win over two and a half goals. I saw 12 to 10. That's my play of the game in that particular fixture. Arsenal-Everton. 
Arsenal were, were a little bit dodgy in, in the first half against Newcastle. Second half, Newcastle were invisible. Arsenal won going away. Now, they play Olympiacos in Greece in the Europa League, the last 32 tonight. Everton have only lost one of the, one, lost one of the last 11 league games, and that was at Man City. I smell an upset here. I don't think Everton will get beat. They're going well. Carlo Ancelotti's got them on firing on all cylinders. Arsenal's still a bit dodgy at the back. I think there'll be plenty of goals in this. And I think 26 to 10, the draw looks a player. Liverpool, disappointing against Atletico Madrid, but they only lost 1-0. I think they'll change it. It was the wake-up call they needed. And playing a West Ham side, you know, they don't look like scoring. I think David Moyes is going to try and keep the score down. 1-6, to six, you know, it doesn't really appeal to many people. I saw 8-10 to 10 Liverpool to win both halves. I saw 8-10 to 10 over 3.5 goals. 9-20 to 20 over 2.5 goals Liverpool. Hate to say it for all the West Ham fans, I think it's going to be a long evening. On to the championship, where we start on Friday with Derby County, Wayne Rooney's team hosting Fulham. Derby going well at home. They've only lost one of their last 15 matches at home against the Fulham team who've only lost one in the last seven and are unbeaten in the last five. 24 to 10, the draw looks my play of the game. I know it's the Wayne Rooney spectacle on Friday, but Fulham are a decent team. Both teams to score looks a good play as well. But 24 to 10, the draw for me in that game. The Saturday early kickoff for us, Brentford hosting Blackburn. I think there'll be plenty of goals in this. Blackburn know only one way, they have a go. Brentford in the, in the playoff places. Blackburn Rovers just on the outskirts, so both teams have to have a full go. It should be Brentford. I don't see Blackburn winning. 6-10 to 10, Brentford. It's a bit sceptical for me, but Brentford the draw in my exotics. Now, Barnsley, Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough haven't won in their last seven games. They were beaten by a Luton Town team who lost 11 away league games in a row. I saw the highlights on Sky. The fans were going berserk. If ever they've got a chance, this is it. Barnsley, another Jekyll and Hyde team. Their 3-0 win at Fulham will inspire them. They'll have a full go. Any results possible here. I think there'll be goals galore as well. I've got a funny feeling that Middlesbrough may sneak back and get back to winning ways. Now, for me, Birmingham are good things. They've won four, drawn three of the last seven league games against the Sheffield Wednesday team, who've lost seven of the last ten. Twelve to ten should be all day, even in the championship where results are a little bit uh, in and out. But I fancy Birmingham City to beat Sheffield, you know, Sheffield Wednesday. The next page, Bristol City, West Brom. I agree with Steve. West Brom signed a few lone players. They've turned the corner. They've stopped giving away silly goals. They've played decent teams and won. 9 to 10, I'd be a little bit sceptical because Bristol City, slowly but surely, they're getting back into the promotion. They've won five and lost two of the last seven. It should be West Brom, but uh, any results possible for me in that particular match. Now, Charlton Luton, relegation decider. Steve fancies Charlton. They cost us our both teams to score last week. We had nine out of the 10 teams in the first 30 minutes. They got beat 2 0 at home by Blackburn. I'm going for them again. I think win and draw for, for Charlton. Any result is possible. Is a relegation decider. I'm going goals as another alternative in that, uh, in that game. But uh, if I have to side with one team, it should be Charlton. Now, Leeds United hosting Reading. Reading got back to winning ways by thrashing Sheffield Wednesday 3-0 away. They, run, they hadn't won in seven games prior to that. But I don't see them winning at Leeds. Leeds slowly but surely getting the mantor back. Three points clear in this of uh, Fulham in third place. Great opportunity to cement the automatic promotion. The price is a little bit short, but it should be Leeds United all day. Now, Notts Forest, for me, the certainty is to be QPR. QPR are really struggling, especially away from home. Notts Forest drew 2-2 at West Brom last week. They beat Leeds 2-0 at home. They're in the playoff mix, and I think even money is a gift. The next page we've got is Preston North End, my beloved North End at home against Hull City. We were disappointing last week when we lost 1-0 at home to Millwall. Speaking to my two mates that went there, said we were disappointing. We got beat by the better team. If we cannot beat the Hull City team, who are really struggling, then the playoff situation for us is dire. I think there'll be goals in the game, but Preston should be too good for Hull City. Stoke City at home, you know... Good and bad, they've been beaten the last few times. They were 2-0 up at, at QPR and got beat 4-2. They're only a couple of points above the relegation zone and playing a Cardiff City team who are really going well. 
for me, the draw is a big player. You know, a lot of experience in the Stoke City side, but the draw for me is a big player in that game. Now, Swansea hosts the Huddersfield team who seem to have gone off the boil. Swansea at home, yeah, they've been in and out. They've only lost one of the last six, but against the Huddersfield team, are only four or five points above the relegation zone. This is a tight game. All three for me in the exotics, but five to two, the draw would be my play. And last but not least, Wigan Athletic hosting Millwall. Millwall have come well. They've only lost one of the last nine and would deserve winners against Preston last week. A win and draw, Millwall would be my play, but Wigan have come right of late. They're in the relegation fight. They've shown a lot of quality recently, but if I had to have a bet, it would be the draw, but Millwall in the draw for me would be that particular, my bet in that particular match. Last night in the PSL, we had two games, which saw Mamelodi Sundowns with a brilliant free kick from Steve Kakana, edge out a game, Bloemfontein Celtic. But Vesfitz, how they conceded a, a penalty with five minutes to go. Steve Gavin Hunt must have been going off his head. They drew 2-2 with the Highlands Park team. who showed a lot of fights. And that leaves Kaiser Chiefs four points clear of Sundowns. Third place, Orlando Pirates are six points behind Chiefs, but they have played a game in hand. And Gavin Hunt's team, they've got 34 points, 11 points behind Chiefs with two games in hand. But Gavin, as I listened to him afterwards, was sick and any chances they had of trying to hoist the PSL crown disappeared with that desperate penalty decision. It's Ned Bank Cup weekend this, uh, this weekend, which kicks off on Friday with Black Leopards, who holds Amar Varara. Black Leopards were really unfortunate last week. They drew one all. They lost, sorry, they lost one nil to Orlando Pirates with a freak goal. It should have been a draw, three minutes to go. A cross, a cross come shot got deflected, ended up in the top corner. And I think they'll get back to winning ways against an Eastern Cape team that plays in the Mitsepi League, Ama Varara, who beat Super Eagles in the last round. One to four Black Leopards. It should be all day. Now, Happy Wanderers are a KZN team who are hosting TS Sporting, who have 13th place in the first division. TS Sporting knocked AX Cape Town out in the last round in penalties. And if I have to side with one team, I would go TS Sporting. But the draw is naturally a big player in the competition. Highlands Park, who took off several key players at halftime when they drew with Fitz, host Kaiser Chiefs, I fancy Chiefs. Highlands Park are a direct team. Chiefs have improved at the back. And in that Tembisa ground, I fancy Chiefs at 9-10 to 10 to get back to winning ways. They shouldn't have lost last week to Maritzburg, a little bit unfortunate. Gave two silly away goals. Chiefs for me all day. Umbombele United, they host Real Kings, who are a Hammersdale-based team. Umbombele United upset Cape Town City last week, winning 1-0. Real Kings are going well in the first division, sitting in eighth place. I think Umbombele United can cause another upset. I wouldn't be taking 2-1, to one, but I wouldn't be taking 13-10 to 10 Real Kings either. Umbombele to cause another upset. The second page, we have Bloom Celtic against Maritzburg. Maritzburg have come right. They've only lost one of the last, the last nine away matches and only one of the last 11 league matches. Bloemfontein Celtic played well against Sundance last night, and at home, they'll make Maritzburg fight. For me, the right play is 21 to 10, the draw. This should be a tight encounter. Barocca should be too good at, at home for the Hungry Lions or top of the Northern Cape League in Motsepi. Wouldn't be taking one to four, but uh, Barocca at home should be too good. As should Sundowns playing the VUT students, Vol University Technicon students. 1 to 20 gives it away. It's the week before they're playing the CAF Champions League, so expect Sundowns to make merry. Last but not least is Bidvest Fitz. It's a Tuesday night game against Chipper United. Bidvest Fitz beat Pirates in the last round, winning on a penalty shootout in a thrilling three all game. Chipper seemed to have lost their last. Yeah, they've only won one of the last seven, seem to have lost that uh, mid-season form where they're very competitive. And I think Bidvest Fitz will make a good win of this cup. Five to ten is not my type of a price, but it should be Bidvest Fitz all day. On to our Saturday soccer exotics. And we start off with the soccer six. I've gone Kaiser Chiefs to beat Highlands Park. I've gone Happy Wanderers win and draw at home against TS Sporting. I've gone Umbombela to cause another upset, win and draw at home against Real Kings. Besiktas, win and draw at home in the Turkish derby against Trabzonspor. I don't see RB Leipzig after last night's performance against Spurs losing to Skulk. And I've got a side with Maritzburg United to avoid defeat to Bloemfontein Celtic. 
192. Our English Soccer Six. I've banked Burnley to beat Bournemouth. I've gone Crystal Palace, win and draw at home against Newcastle. I've banked Sheffield United to beat Brighton. I've gone the field in the Southampton versus Aston Villa fixture. Likewise, the Bristol City West Brom clash and ended up with Man City win and draw at home against Leicester, 2-1-6. On to the soccer 10. I've gone Kaiser Chiefs to beat Highlands Park. I've gone the field in the Happy Wanderers versus TS Sporting game. I've gone the field in the Mbombele United versus Real Kings clash. I've banked Burnley to beat Bournemouth. I don't see Crystal Palace losing at home to Newcastle United. To the second page, I've gone Sheffield United to beat Brighton. I've gone Southampton, win and draw at home against Aston Villa. I'm bankering Barcelona to beat Arbor. Going Man City, win and draw at Leicester. And going Maritzburg United, win and draw at Bloemfontein Celtic, 288. On Soccer 13, I've gone Man City to win and draw at Leicester. I've gone Southampton to win or draw at home against Aston Villa. I've gone Burnley to beat Bournemouth. I've gone Crystal Palace, win and draw at home against Newcastle United. I'm bankering Sheffield United to beat Brighton. I'm going Birmingham City to beat Sheffield Wednesday. I'm signing with West Brom to avoid defeat at Bristol City. Second page, I'm going Leeds United to beat Reading. I'm going Notts Forest to beat QPR. I'm going Preston to beat Hull City. I'm going Stoke City, win and draw at home against Cardiff City. Going Swansea City, win and draw at home against Huddersfield Town, and I'm going Wigan Athletic, all three against Millwall, 326 rand. My best bet of the, sorry, onto the budgies bets for the weekends, I'm going a red card in the Chelsea versus Tottenham Hotspur game. I'm backing Burnley to beat Bournemouth, and I'm going Everton to win or draw against Arsenal, 2,500 to 200. Our over two and a half goals premiership sides are Crystal Palace, Newcastle, Southampton, Aston Villa, Wolves versus Norwich, Arsenal, Everton, and Liverpool versus West Ham, 3,800 to 200. On to the championship, where my treble, I've gone Notts Forest to beat QPR. I've gone Preston to beat Hull City, and over two and a half goals in each game. And I think Birmingham City will be too good at home for Sheffield Wednesday, 2,800 to 200. My championship, both teams to score sides are Derby Fulham, Brentford Blackburn, Barnsley Middlesbrough, Charlton Luton, and Wigan Millwall. Just over 15 to 1, 3,100 to 200. Our Spanish quartet for the weekend, I'm going Atletico Madrid to beat Villarreal. I'm going Catafe to beat Sevilla. I'm going Real Madrid to beat Levante in over two and a half total goals. And both teams to score in the Osasuna Catafe clash, 2,800 to 200. My six on Exit for the weekend, I'm going Wolves to beat Norwich, Liverpool to beat West Ham, Notts Forest to beat QPR, Barcelona to beat Arbor, Atletico Madrid to beat Villarreal, and Lazio to beat Genoa on Sunday, 2,500 to 200. My best bet for the weekend is Nottingham Forest. After their last performance at West Brom, where they drew 2-2 at away, and their 2-0 home victory over Leeds, that should be good enough to beat a QPR team who have lost five of the last six away league matches. And my value bet for the weekend, I contemplated whether to go Leicester City against Man City, but I'm going for the red card. Yeah, I think a 3-1, to one, the red card in the Chelsea-Tottenham game, I think it's going to be a fiery encounter, and that is my value bet for the weekend. To everyone who watching our last one standing show, sorry, everyone watching our onside soccer show, have a good weekend and please remember, stay onside.